Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll take a closer look at the updated full support build for Doram. Spirit Whisperer, which is a tier 4 class of Doram, is one of the underrated support jobs. Aside from being obnoxiously tanky, Spirit Whispers can protect their teammates with their immense heals and shields. They also bring strong crowd control and AoE abilities that can force enemies to disengage. We'll talk about which stats, skills, runes, gears, cards, and other upgrades that are needed to improve the effectiveness of a full support Doram in the battlefield. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First up, let's take a look at the important stats to upgrade. For attribute point distribution, prioritize maxing out Vit since it boosts your max HP, HP regen, and physical defense. Having a huge HP pool will not only improve your tankiness but will also increase the damage of your Shark Fellow skill. Next is Int for higher healing, max SP, SP regen, and magic defense. It will also improve the magic damage of your Flying Saucer which can help in peeling off the enemy's HP bar. Next, a lot sufficient points on decks for reducing the variable cast time of skills. Having higher decks may also help counter the cast time debuffs from Time Field, Spellbreak, and Mandragora Howling. As for the remaining points, you can allot it on luck for reducing the crit rate of auto attacks, the headshot chance of Gunslingers, and the negative refinement chance of Holgren. Aside from a well balanced attribute point distribution, you also need to boost your base HP, virus damage reductions, resistance to abnormal statuses, cooldown reduction, and skill delay reduction. Up next for skills, here's my recommended skill point allocation. First, for the tier 1 witch job skills, get soul bead for boosting HP and SP, soul strike for longer casting range and to add true damage to your skills, stealth to conceal yourself from the enemy, stoop to significantly reduce damage received, and jump for engaging or escaping. However, jumping will remove your stealth and stoop buffs. Next, for the Tier 2 Spiritualist Job Skills, get Fresh Shrimp for Continuous Healing, Level 3 Shrimp Swamp as prerequisite for Tuna Steak which restores an ally's HP and SP. It can be used on yourself if you have a Fresh Tuna S rune with activated 3rd line. Then get Level 3 Kiwi Stock Gun as prerequisite for Kiwi Root Stock Twining which snares enemies and causes HP and SP loss. Level 3 Picky Peck as prerequisite for Curled Beetle Charge which boosts movement speed. Terra Trauma, which is an attack skill that has a chance to leave a biting scar on the enemy, causing 3% HP loss per second. And Meow Crowd to boost your HP by 5%. Next for the Advanced Tier 2 Summoner job, get Night Vision for detecting hidden enemies within 6 meters. Tune a party for granting damage shield to yourself and an ally, which scales based on your max HP and healing bonus stack. Oceanic Power for increasing your healing bonus and damage reduction. Groom for healing and removing some abnormal statuses on yourself. Level 1 Lunatic Carrot Pound as prerequisite for life power which boosts your max HP by 20% and hits for increasing movement speed and for a chance to dodge single target range locked physical skills and auto attacks. Next with a tier 3 Spirit Summoner job, get Rumble which heals nearby teammates using Groom and has a high chance of removing 2 debuffs. Tasty Shrimp Party which grants your teammates the effects of Fresh Shrimp and Shrimp Swamp and increases their SP region. Oceanic Soul for enhancing the effects of your heals and shields. And Dried Lifesaver Fish for granting immunity to death for 8 seconds in exchange for slower movement speed. Next with a Tier 4 Spirit Whisperer job, get Life Concentric first as prerequisite for Shark Fellow which is your primary damaging skill. It causes HP loss to enemies, which scales based on two factors only, your max HP and your enemy's current HP. Next is Evil Cat Roar, to remove all buffs of the first enemy hit and for a chance to inflict irresistible silence to all enemies in the path. Tornado Storm and its enhancement skill to increase the movement speed of you and your teammates and slow down the enemies in the path. Revival of Everything for automatically placing summons upon death. Concentric Sea Spirit to reduce the damage received from burst skills. Clear Sky Whirlpool to summon a whirlpool in a designated area that will continuously draw enemies to the center and deal water element magic damage per second. 
cat transformation and its enhancement skill to resurrect a teammate and automatically grant tuna party on the resurrected target. Tide shield to protect a teammate from receiving damage for 5 seconds. Dolan trick and its enhancement skill to transform an enemy into a broccoli for 3 seconds, reducing their movement speed and damage reduction. An obstacle for a chance to automatically land Kiwi Rootstock Twining on the enemy and increase your movement speed when you receive damage. Lastly, we have several important skills which can only be obtained from runes. First is Cat Flying Saucer Bombardment from the Flying Frisbee S rune which lets you summon a cat UFO. This skill has huge AoE that will make enemies with no endure skills suffer from stagger. Second is Corn Gatling from Acer Monument, which is another summoning skill that can stagger enemies. And third is No Entry from Acer Monument, which is an AoE skill that inflicts Kiwi Rootstock Twining on all enemies within range. Before we proceed to the next part of this guide, I'd like to give special thanks to Smile One for helping make this video possible. Smile One is an international game top up center which has been in business for almost a decade. They have hundreds of partnerships with game developers including Ragnarok Mobile so they can offer cheaper BCC and monthly premium versus in-game prices. Smile One Top Up is available in many countries across all servers and there are various payment methods you can choose from. Here in the Philippines, I can pay easily via Gcash, BPI, or 7-Eleven outlets and receive the BCC instantly. Please do check out Smile One's pricing and payment methods using my exclusive link in the description box below. Up next, let's discuss the most important runes to get. For Acer Monument, these are the essential nodes that can improve your Doram skills. As for attribute nodes, focus first on the ones that improve your defensive and support capabilities. For advanced runes, first get a fresh Tuna S rune with activated third line effect for you to be able to heal yourself with Tuna Stake. Second is the Sea Spirit Asylum Star rune with activated third line effect to automatically turn the attacker into broccoli for 1 second whenever the effect of concentric Sea Spirit is triggered. Third is a Flying Frisbee S rune to get the Cat Flying Saucer Bombardment Summoning Skill. Prioritize activating the third line effect to increase the limit of Cat Flying Saucer that can exist to two. Having the second line effect would also be a good bonus to inflict curse status on enemies. Fourth is a Secret Game S rune with activated third line effect so that you won't be revealed when attacking. Fifth is the Meow Hunter S rune with high value on the first line for a higher chance to refresh all of your job's skill cooldowns every time you successfully kill an enemy. And last is the Mentha Growth S rune with activated third line effect to be able to cast Cat Flying Saucer, Clear Sky Whirlpool, and Corn Gatling on top of Earth Field. As for attribute runes, prioritize leveling up the following. Up next, let's dive into the recommended equipment and cards. Since the new tiers and shadow equipment update will be coming soon, I'll be including my recommendations for both ancient and synthesized equipment. First, for weapon, you may either use a Stardust Dragon Staff for more HP and reductions, or a Giant Fox Grass for higher healing and shield. It should be enchanted with High Status Resist or Tenacity 4 and inlaid with Spacer Star card. For offhand, you may use any of the following. Marine Soul Bulwark and Giant Armor Shield against Begetters and several Magic DPS. Historical Witness and Meteorite Buckler against Physical Damage Dealers. Or Sins of the Living and Arcane Codex for reducing skill cooldown and cast delay. It should be enchanted with Tenacity 4 and inlaid with any of the following cards. For armor, I recommend using a Tider Rider's armor as main equipment for a huge boost in elemental damage reduction and a Comet Warfare armor as shadow equipment for increasing your resistance to abnormal status. It should be enchanted with high HP% percent and status resist and inlaid with any of the following cards. 
For Ancient Garment, there are plenty of options so just choose which has 12% skill damage reduction random attribute. While for Synthesized Garment, I prefer Grey Elf's Manto especially if you're using Stardust Dragon Staff as weapon due to their set effect. In a future update, it will have a tier 5 effect that grants Endure effect when receiving physical damage so it's a good alternative if you don't have an Edka Star card. Your garment should be enchanted with high HP% percent, status resist or divine blessing 4 and inlaid with eclipse star card for HP or deviling star card for elemental reduction. For foot gear you may either use crucible of blood or super mecha war boots as main equipment and green raton shoes as shadow equipment. It should be enchanted with high HP% percent, status resist or divine blessing 4 and inlaid with Edgar Star card for permanent endure. For accessories, the options are Original Will Talisman, Survival Ring, and Martyr's Necklace, all of which increase survivability. Your accessories should be enchanted with Tenacity 4 and inlaid with Osiris Star card. For headwear, there are lots of options to choose from, but here are my top picks for each slot. For head, use Eggshell Beauty to protect your gears from equipment destruction. It should be enchanted with Armor 4 and inlaid with Dark Illusion Star card to insta-cast skills with fixed cast time such as Shark Fellow, Dolan Trick, Tide Shield, and Hiss. For face, a plus 6 Eastern Dragon Visage would be my top choice for additional 16% skill damage reduction. For mouth, get a high refined angry snarl for increasing demi human damage reduction and reducing variable cast time of skills. For back and tail, get a high refined midnight stars and amethyst creature with blasphemy fourth enchant for a huge boost in skill damage reduction. As for mounts, these are the ones that provide 50% increase in movement speed, which are twice as fast as ordinary mounts. Take note that you may also use GVG Rental Gears, God Artifacts, and 6v6 Team Competition Headwear for specific events. Aside from enchantments, you should also invest in your equipment's refinement, enhancement, and reinforcement as they provide additional defensive stats. As a support, it's recommended to have alternative equipment and cards readily available, allowing for easy switching based on the enemy lineup. Up next, let's discuss the other upgrades that you can invest in to further improve your survivability in battle. For pets, you may bring an Abun, Osiris, or Archangeling pet in battle which can resurrect you upon death. Another option is the Tartarus which boosts your max HP and has a small chance to grant immunity to magic damage. For guild buffs, max out your HP, survive, and rest blessings in guild blessings and then prioritize upgrading all death and elemental damage reduction in guild prayers. For Oracle Mirror attack attributes, you may extract a high refined Kota Staff for stronger heals or Holgrens Refined Hammer for a chance to destroy the enemy's weapon and armor when attacking. While for defense attributes, you have the option to extract any of the following based on your preference for status resist, HP, or demi-human damage reduction. For Ancient Relics, you may craft one of the following Valkyrie's Blessing for more int and wit, Horn of the Unyielding to protect against burst damage, or Bragus Me to prevent removal of buffs you gave to your allies and the buffs your allies gave to you. You may also craft the Elf's Piccolo for a no dex build as it will reduce your VCT to zero. For Multi Job, you can unlock the following classes to get more wit, int, dex, and luck. As for the Adventure Handbook, you should collect items and achievements that grant max HP, base HP, physical death, and magic death stats when unlocked or deposited. Finally, let's discuss the general battle preparation and skill setup. First, make sure that all your buffs are in prepare for elite, such as Soul Bead, Stoop, Stealth, Curled Beetle Charge, Hiss, Night Vision, and Tasty Shrimp Party. Then place the following skills in your manual and auto skill bars. Before entering the arena, get your consumables that will help improve your survival. 
At the start, buff first using Prepare for Elite and place Tornado Storm in front of you to increase you and your teammates movement speed and slow down the enemies. Before your enemies approach, you can pre-cast Cat Flying Saucer Bombardment, Corn Gatling and No Entry on the ground to control the area. If the enemy manages to penetrate your defenses and go near your team, cast Dolan Trick to turn him into a Broccoli, Evil Cat Roar to remove his buffs, and then quickly follow up with Shark Fellow and Tyro Trauma for dealing HP loss damage which can help your team secure the kill. During team fights, make sure to protect yourself and your teammates with Tuna Steak for healing, Tuna Party for shield, Rumble for clearing debuffs, Tide Shield for anti-fatal, and Cat Transformation for resurrecting. When caught in a sticky situation, make sure to cast Dried Lifesaver Fish for an 8 second anti-fatal effect, giving you more time to control your enemies and protect your team. Use Jump and Go to a safe place before regrouping with your team. Spirit Whispers have a lot of good utility skills, so you need to familiarize yourself not only with their effects but also with the cooldown, skill delay, and correct timing of each skill. Alright, so that's it for my full support Doram Speed Guide. Overall, Spirit Whispers have great sustainability and crowd control skills in their kit, making them a force to be reckoned with. Please consider giving a like, comment, subscribe, and share if you found this video helpful. Your support really means a lot to me. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.